Father Jeremy Habirimina. The fast that Jesus Christ wants. Friday after Ash. Readings. First reading. The fast the Lord wants. Reading the book of Isaiah 58, 1 to 9. Thus says the Lord God, cry out full-throated and unsparingly, lift up your voice like a trumpet blast, tell my people their wickedness, and the house of Jacob their sins. They seek me day after day, and desire to know my ways, like a nation that has done what is just and not abandoned the law of their God. They ask me to declare what is due them, pleased to gain access to God. Why do we fast, and you do not see it? Afflict ourselves, and you take no note of it? Lo, on your fast day you carry out your own pursuits, and drive all your laborers. Yes, your fast ends in quarreling and fighting, striking with wicked claw. Would that today you might fast so as to make your voice heard on high? Is this the manner of fasting I wish, of keeping a day of penance, that a man bow his head like a reed and lie in sackcloth and ashes? Do you call this a fast? A day acceptable to the Lord? This, rather, is the fasting that I wish, releasing those bound unjustly, untying the thongs of the yoke, setting free the oppressed, breaking every yoke, sharing your bread with the hungry, sheltering the oppressed and the homeless, clothing the naked when you see them, and not turning your back on your own. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your wound shall quickly be healed. Your vindication shall go before you, and the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. Responsorial Psalm Psalm 50 Response A heart contrite and humbled, O God, you will not spurn. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness, in the greatness of your compassion wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt and of my sin cleanse me. A heart contrite and humbled, O oh God, you will not spurn. For I acknowledge my offense, and my sin is before me always. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. A heart contrite and humbled, O oh God, you will not spurn. For you are not pleased with sacrifices. Should I offer a burnt offering, you would not accept it. My sacrifice, O oh God, is a contrite spirit, a heart contrite and humbled, O oh God, you will not spurn. A heart contrite and humbled, O oh God, you will not spurn. Acclamation before the Gospel Seek good, not evil, so that you may live, and the Lord will be with you. Gospel When they take the groom, then they will fast. A reading of the Holy Gospel according to Matthew 9, 14-15 the disciples of John approached Jesus and said, Why do we and the Pharisees fast much, but your disciples do not fast? Jesus answered them, 
Can the wedding guests mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast. Talk Dear brethren, Jesus Christ introduces to us today to teach us the fast he wants. There is much talk of fasting. There are even those who come to propose something concrete. You have to eat just that and not that. But there's no talk about the heart. Jesus' teaching in this is clear, and that of St. Paul, full of the Holy Spirit. Food has nothing to do with the heart. Well, it's from the heart where the sins come out. As Jesus Christ explained in Mark, chapter 7 and St. Paul, to the Colossians, chapter 3. It is very important to understand that a person who has gone nights or days without eating cannot contribute to the glory of Christ. Jesus Christ is not pleased with the hunger one can suffer. Jesus Christ wants the good of our bodies. That's why he healed sick people, cured sick and resurrected Lazarus. For Jesus Christ, the body is something we need for our salvation. For he became flesh, wants to save us in everything we are. My salvation is not the suffering of my body. No one can say, as your body does not suffer, you will not be saved. Because what saves you is the suffering of your body. No. What saves you is the suffering and passion and death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Hunger has no power over our sin. The suffering of our bodies, imposed by ourselves, neither. Only Jesus Christ it is the Lord, it is the Savior. No one can change anything about their vices for the body exercises they've done. It is the Holy Spirit the Spirit of Jesus Christ that enters in our lives and transforms us for free. What he wants from us is to accept that struggle of fasting what some people think about food and drink. Sometimes some look at each other and wonder why don't you guys fast? That's something external, coming from outside. Jesus Christ teaches us today the true fast, which comes out of the inside. Leaving inside means that Jesus Christ takes possession in our hearts and fulfills our desires, so that we don't need anything from this world. We don't need anyone in this world to save us, to be able to have peace, the joy of the saved. If someone thinks that they cannot live in a place where this or that, which would have been costing as a child, they think that they will not be able to live without it. So that statement is that of a person who doesn't know that Jesus Christ is the all. The food and drink, that's all nothing. Philippians 3, 7 all that could give me glory in this world, I consider it rubbish, since I have found Christ. That's why Jesus Christ says, when they take the groom, then they will fast. Jesus Christ has opened new times. He gave a new law. We're in the New Testament. We have been purified by the blood of Jesus Christ. While Jesus Christ is, 
he should not fast. It's like we're asking those who are already in heaven. It doesn't make sense. Because the sense of fasting is a human means to help me in my human struggles. To be able to walk towards Christ, and if I'm already with him, what more do I want? But Jesus Christ told them, later you will have to fast. That fast, it's the one we're in. Yes. Because Jesus Christ went to his Father. Now we can't see him face to face. We are with him in faith and in hope. He lives with us really. But what we rightly crave is lacking, to truly live with him face to face. See him face to face. That's the thirst we have. As St. Augustine said, You have created us for you, Lord, and our soul is relentless until we have caught up with you. That thirst that Christians have, walking towards Jesus Christ, as St. Paul also explained in the second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 5, Verses 1 to 8, it is not our dwelling, we have the other. Then we continually live in fasting, that is, the things of this world, even people, cannot fill us with the thirst we have to drinking from the living water eternally, which is Jesus Christ. People can never separate us from him. No. Because that thirst is a living desire to live with Jesus Christ eternally. It's a victory of ours over the world. As Jesus Christ said to John 16, 33, I have overcome the world. Don't be afraid. I have beaten the world. Then the Lord comforts us like this. The world has no power. As Jesus Christ asked his Father to give theirs, who lived in the world without being of the world, without belonging to this world. We live continuously fast in this world. Because we can't enjoy him. Everything is nothing. It is rubbish, if we compare it to living with Jesus Christ our Lord, our life, our death, our resurrection, and our glory. To live nothing but looking for Christ or finding Him continually in the liturgical media we have, or enjoying their presence in faith and hope. Many have totally abandoned the world in some way. They devoted the entire consecrated the following to Christ. And there are those who preferred to die rather than separate from Christ, like martyrs. They are trials that really show us that we are in a continuous fast if we have found Jesus Christ. We always walk going to you. So, if someone insults us, or belittles us, or doesn't speak well of us, that's nothing. Because we're not looking for the words of love from others. That's nothing. That can't fill the desire that I have of the words I would hear coming out of the mouth of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why their words give me life and comfort me, even if there are people who insult or despise me. That's nothing. Those who belong to Christ expect nothing from this world. This world can't give them anything, because it has nothing for us. He has no eternal life. 
So, living like this, the Lord today rightly reminds us that living above the people and things of this world is true fasting. To live nothing but for Him, to Him, with Him, in Him. And that pushes us to leave our hearts in His hands to completely transform us, as the first reading is asking us, avoiding injustices and words of evil or looks, leaving all our heart in the hands of Christ, to be fully transformed by His love, for His kindness. May Jesus Christ transform us through the prayer of the Virgin Mary and all the saints. Put us in the living fast that leads us to his kingdom, in which we feel that true joy is him. They can take away everything we can have in this world. That's nothing. Even lose our life. That's nothing. Jesus Christ is everything to us. Jesus Christ, dead and risen, is everything to us. It's our joy. It's our life. It's our death. Our resurrection. Our glory. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Come, Holy Spirit, Immaculate Heart of Mary, protect us. 